At the beginning of the 21st century, computers have placed the sum of the world's knowledge into the palms of our hands. Today, any child in any country, with a smartphone and an internet connection, has access to more information than Jimmy Carter, the president of the wealthiest, most powerful, and technologically advanced country, did when he occupied the White House. This rapid democratization of technology, unprecedented in human history, has not only narrowed the knowledge gap between rich and poor, it has profoundly changed the manner in which we live our lives. From smartphones, laptops, GPS, and video game consoles, to thermostats, coffee makers, and smart speakers, computers have become so ubiquitous we can't imagine our lives without them. And yet, a mere 45 years ago, the length of just half a human lifetime, computers were anything but personal. The high cost associated with their production not only put the computers used by businesses and universities out of reach of most people, but discouraged their use in everyday consumer goods we now take for granted. In fact, like so many things from the 1970s, a decade synonymous with excess, too much pant, too much lapel, too much hair, too much car, and too much head, when it came to computers, there was just too much cost. But by 1974, that was about to change because that is when a small group of Motorola employees in Phoenix, Arizona, quit their jobs to pursue a dream, to make the world's first affordable microprocessor, one that will put the computing power of the semiconductor within reach of everyone. Together with their families, they make a bold move. They pack up their homes and move across the country to work at a semiconductor design and fabrication company in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, called MOS Technology. There, they begin collaborating with engineers already working at MOS, to create an 8-bit microprocessor that is not only smaller and cheaper, but as fast or faster than other more expensive microchips, a feat they accomplish in less than a year. In 1975, they introduced what is now regarded as one of the most influential microchips ever designed, the MOS 6502, and the world is never the same again. Selling for just a fraction of the cost of its competitors, the 6502 caused rapid decreases across the entire market, spawning a revolution in personal computing. Featured in such seminal computers as the Apple I and II, the Commodore PET and the BCC Micro, as well as the Atari and Nintendo home video game consoles, the 6502 has since become the brains inside toys, office machines, and medical devices too numerous to mention. To date, billions of 6502 family microprocessors have been created, and they are still in production today. So profound was its impact that one chronicler of the computing industry noted, when one particular geek stuck one particular chip into one particular computer circuit board and booted it up, the universe skipped a beat. The geek was Steve Wozniak, the computer was the Apple One, and the chip was the 6502. While the story of Chuck Peddle, the man who conceived of the 6502, and that of Bill Mensch, one of the original design team members, are widely recognized and recorded, the stories of the other engineers and employees who also worked on the 6502 and their contributions are not. Team 6502 seeks to change that. Through personal accounts, or those of family related to the original 6502 design team members, including Terry Holt, Will Mathis, Rod Orgel, Harry Bauckham, Sidney Ann Holt, Walt Eisenhower, and John Pavanen, as well as historical documents including MOS technology brochures, 6502 schematics, inner office memos, notes from brainstorming sessions, patent awards, and 6502 testing procedures and results, Team 6502 tells the stories of the other MOS technology engineers and employees behind the chip that put the transformative power of the microprocessor into everybody's hands. From the moment of its legendary introduction at Westcon, the Western Electronic Show and Convention, almost five decades ago, when computer enthusiasts and hobbyists from across Silicon Valley flocked to San Francisco to purchase the 6502, to the legions of computer programmers and historians who continue to debate, discuss, program, and experiment with the iconic chip to this day, 6502's appeal has spanned time and generations. May Team 6502 fan the flame of that enthusiasm by providing new information about the people and processes behind its production, and with it, new food for thought and discussion for those who have carved out a special place in their hearts for the little chip that changed the world.